Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 48. This is Jen, and I am so glad you're joining me today. Today's episode is sponsored by First Command, and we are so grateful for their support and all they do for the military community. And First Command offers financial planning for all stages of life for military families. They also offer careers for military spouses, so keep listening to learn more about that. Today, I will be joined by Mark Steffi, who is the CEO of First Command, and he is talking about the challenges facing military families during COVID and the quarantine and ways that you can handle those financial challenges that are just so unique to this strange year. One of the really interesting things he talked about was the payroll tax deferral being offered to military right now and his suggestions for how to handle that. And it might not be what you think it is. So make sure and listen all the way through because he's very wise and is just here to help military and their families kind of work through these issues that we've just literally never faced before. So before we get to that, let me just remind you that any resources mentioned will be linked in the show notes. You can also go to millspousematters.com, click on the podcast tab to find all the past episodes, all the resources mentioned. There's also some freebies for military families there, like a PCS move checklist and resources, as well as some resources for military kids, a free devotional for deployment and links to find my book and connect with me as at Mill Spouse Matters on Instagram. Now let's get on to my talk with Mark Steffi of First Command. Thanks for listening. So hello, everyone. Today, I am talking to Mark Steffi from First Command, and he's going to be sharing with us some great information about what First Command offers military families, along with some tips and advice for families facing financial challenges during the pandemic slash quarantine slash furloughs, all the things that are happening, as well as some ideas for preparing before a financial challenge hits. And you might remember Mark as he joined us on episode 38 to share some money-saving tips and information for military spouse employment at First Command. So make sure and go check out that episode as well. And here's a little bit more information about Mark. Mark Steffi is the president and CEO of First Command. He joined First Command in March 2010. And in this position, Mark leads the company on a number of important strategic priorities, including the continuous improvement of the First Command client experience, focusing on military engagement, the continuing adaption to a rapidly evolving digital world, and leadership development. Before joining First Command, Mark served in a number of leadership roles with major companies in the financial services industry. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree in finance from the University of Illinois, graduating with high honors. He holds Series 7, 8, 23, 63, and 65 securities registration, plus life and health insurance licenses. So visit firstcommand.com and also click on Get Started to meet up with a coach near you or to look into careers as a financial advisor with First Command. So welcome back, Mark. I appreciate you taking your time to come on the show and share with military families today. It's great to be back, Jen. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot has happened since we spoke in April. I think we were like, we're kind of, you know, going to get through this and, and thinking closures might be ending soon, but here we are. (laughs) I know we've got about 95% of our employees working from home and we've been doing that since mid March. And like you said, I think the world's changed since we got together in April. A little bit. I think it was, it seemed very short term and in it's, it's not. So I, it's changed for everybody. I, in fact, I have a quote. I call him my coworker. My husband has been working from home since March. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's and I great. had, I had worked from home for 10 years. So we've had to exchange some inner office memos about, you know, <laughs> <laughs> inner office memos. Yeah. That's, uh, it's, it takes on a different personality, doesn't it? It yeah. does. It does. So, you know, Before we get into specific financial advice for those military families that are facing challenges right now, because there are a lot, but some of my listeners may not be familiar with what First Command does. So what can you talk about some of the services that you offer to military families? Yeah, thanks. Overall, I would say, you know, First Command offers financial coaching through all stages of military life and, and not just through the military, but but into your you know, second career and through retirement. And, and we like to see this and, and view this as a lifelong relationship with our clients. 
And it might make sense to define financial coaching just for a second. And, sure. and for us, what that means is it's the establishment of, of a financial plan or kind of, and that financial plan is your roadmap from how you get from where you are today mm-hmm. to where you want to be five, 10, 20 years down the road. Um, unlike many companies, after we help, uh, develop that financial plan. We actually help our clients implement that financial plan. And that often means, you know, I might need some insurance. I need some investment advice. um, We need some banking and savings work. And we call those the three cornerstones, insurance, investments, and banking. Mm -hmm. So we help put that plan into action, basically. And then there's coaching all along the way to make sure that not only does that plan get implemented effectively, but that we coach you throughout that lifelong relationship to ensure that financial plan stays on track. And if you think of that plan as your roadmap, you know, like Mm -hmm. you would go to, you know, ways or or your, your maps on your phone to, to go down a route you've never taken before, you know, it, that plan gives you that roadmap and inevitably there's a detour or traffic jam or something, right? (laughs) And so then the coaching is what gets you through those traffic jams and gets you back on course and make sure that you're, you ultimately get to where you want to go. And so that's really kind of in a nutshell and kind of in simple terms, what Mm -hmm. we do. Um, we, we focus on serving those who serve our country. Our advisors have a deep understanding of military life. Uh, 80% of our advisors are former military or military spouses. And so they're really great at understanding the unique challenges of military lives. lives. And then also making sure that the benefits uh, that, that military members receive, military families receive, get factored into that financial plan as well to ensure that our military families are getting and taking full advantage of the of those benefits that they so richly deserve. Yeah. And that's good because a lot of families just don't know. That's right. that's incredible. Yeah. That's a great aspect of it. Yeah. I think too, I mean, if, um, and what's really unique about this offering is that the average American thinks that financial planning is a high end service just, just for the wealthy. Um, many folks, especially in the military, they don't think financial planning is even available to them. Right. And if it was, they assume that they, they couldn't afford it, but that's not true at first command. We're, we're committed to serving the financial needs of our nation's active duty military families. We know that the best Mm -hmm. way to get started and the best way to get financially squared away is through a financial plan. And we also know that the earlier in your career you get started on on planning and getting that plan implemented, the better chance you have of of getting on a path of financial security and achieving those goals that are so important. And I think that's so good to to reiterate the about being younger, I think I shared this with you last time. We did meet with a first command financial advisor back when we were in our mid twenties and it did change the course of how we did our finances. And, and I think like, you know, you just mentioned with benefits, you don't always know exactly what's available to you. And as, as an active duty military family, um, I know that first command doesn't charge for financial planning services and as well as guard and reserves, correct? That's correct. Um, we, we wanted to take cost off the table. We wanted to eliminate any barrier to entry for, uh, for becoming a financial, uh, planning client. So in other words, we wanted to eliminate any reason for, for not mm-hmm. getting your, your plan started. And that's why we don't charge the normal industry fees, uh, for financial planning. And when you take cost off the table, it gives those those military families, and as you said, Jen, especially those younger military families, um, a chance to get started now on reducing debt, uh, protecting your family, you know, starting to build some wealth. And you know, when you're in your early twenties, obviously, for most people, you don't have a whole lot of money to invest. And some people think, right. well, what? What difference could fifty dollars a month make, or a hundred dollars a month make? You'd be surprised that over time and with compound interest and growth, what a huge difference that can make. And so, you know, that was the other thing we wanted to take off the table: this this account minimum that so many companies have of, you know, whether it's a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We don't have any account minimums either because mm-hmm. we've got a saying at First Command that um, we don't chase wealth; we build it. And so we're really focused on getting young military families started and getting them on a path of financial security. And we don't want the, well, it's only a hundred dollars a month to get in the way that hundred dollars a month over time really adds up. And so what we like to say is, you know, this, all that gives you a chance to pursue military families to pursue lifetime goals and dreams. Mm -hmm. Simply put, it is available. You can afford it. And uh, we're really just focused on taking care of military families. And, I would just, I would totally reiterate what you just said, because I felt like I remember at the time thinking this, 
a financial planner, that's for rich people. You know, right, that's right. for somebody that's already got money. And you just have to kind of remove that perception. I think you all do a very good job of doing that and starting with what you have and starting small and, it, and just letting it build. Absolutely. Well, I know right now, a lot of military families, especially with the stop move orders, they were kind of stuck or some of them are still stuck and they've been in lodging or they've had financial burdens that they didn't expect over the past few months. And so, and, and a lot of spouses have lost their jobs or been furloughed. I know we have four adult children and two of my children were furloughed. And so I'm seeing this firsthand. And then I'm hearing from a lot of listeners that they've lost a job or they've been furloughed and thought they'd come back and they didn't. So the loss of a second income for a young military family can be devastating. And that seems to be happening a lot during this pandemic. So I, what advice would you give to military families that are going through this? Yeah, it's been a tough time for military families, especially with mm-hmm. this, this, this issues on spousal employment. Um, so many military families um, carry a lot of debt, um, and, a, and a significant portion of their income tends to go to servicing that debt or paying the interest that comes with you know with having that debt. Um, and so, one of the things I would encourage folks to do is, um, and you, you're seeing a lot of lenders become much more flexible in terms of. Um, understanding what's going on. So to reach mm-hmm. out to your lenders and um, find out if, if they're if they're deferring payments, if they're allowing you to skip payments, if they'll waive fees for that. The, the biggest thing I would tell you if you do that is just be sure that you understand the arrangement and, and how that's really going to work. And um, sometimes people think, well, I can skip a payment. That means I don't have to make the payment. No, you just have to make the payment at a later time. You just don't yeah. have to make it right now. So I don't want people to think that means that they, the payment is eliminated. It's just deferred to, to a later date. Mm-hmm. A- another thing to consider when it comes to debt is what you find, uh, especially with young military families, is, is the credit cards they have carry these enormous uh, interest rates, right? 22, 24, yeah. 26%. And when you look at your your statement, so much of what you're paying every month is going to pay off that interest because mm-hmm. of those those high interest rates. And one of the things we do for our clients at First Command is is often, you know, I, I explain that whole process of building a plan and implementing the plan. Often, the first thing we have to do is help them eliminate the debt even before we get to the financial plan. And that will take, you know, often ten or fifteen thousand dollars of credit card debt. Where the the family's paying twenty two twenty four percent interest, and then we we uh, consolidate those debts and then uh, refinance that down to an eight or a nine percent loan as opposed to twenty two or twenty six. Mm-hmm. And what you can do with the difference that you're paying in interest, you can either you can continue to pay down that debt but pay it down faster, and you can take some of that savings and start to put it towards your financial plan. So it's mm-hmm. really a, a huge win for our. Um, our military family so that they're not just paying all everything in interest. So right. And you know, never getting ahead. <laughs> right. And never getting ahead. Right. And often just falling further and further behind. So mm-hmm. check with your lenders, look for uh, an opportunity to consolidate those debts into, into lower interest loans. Um, a lot of families have two cars, but, but uh, one of them might not be being used very much right now. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't eliminate all the insurance on that second vehicle, but you might be able to reduce some of the insurance you're paying, uh, right. at least temporarily while you're not really using that car. You know, gas, uh, it, it, people are driving less, they're going out to dinner less. So look for those savings as much as you possibly can. I really like the idea of going back and um, I would pull a, a a bank statement or a credit card statement from a year ago and right. I'd pull my most recent one and I'd put those things side by side and try to figure out what are we doing without what what are we doing without these days that we used to think was was necessary, you know, historically, right? Like, oh, we couldn't live <laughs> without this or that. And then you find out, you know, we've gone months without having right. this or that, right? So can we lock that in permanently? And then sometimes well, we're not spending money on this thing anymore, but it's been replaced by this other thing. And maybe right. the other thing can go as well. It's just that you got used to spending the money and you found a different way to spend it. Um, subscriptions are big. You know, people sign up for, for Netflix or Disney Plus or gym memberships. And if you go back and scrub those statements, you start to realize, like, hey, we've got, we've got five of these streaming services. Do we need one, let alone five? And maybe you can drop those down. And if your gym's not open and you've been going there, you know, stop those subscriptions. Um, Starbucks seems to be pretty popular, as yeah. you well know. And, and you'd be surprised at how many, you know, four or five, you know, $8 cups of coffee people drink in a week. 
And right. you start thinking, well, what's four dollars? Well, four dollars four times a week, five, you know, four weeks in a month, and then you twelve months in a year, and you start adding that up. It's like, holy cow! Yeah, you know, all yeah. this can make a difference. It's the little things that add up and you don't even realize what a big difference they can make. And I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but I was going through our bills and kind of was like, why is my Netflix so high? Right. I still had the DVD service right, right. and I haven't gotten a DVD from them from five years. And I was like, I can't believe this is still there. And I didn't notice. And that's not a big savings. It's maybe like $8. But I'm thinking for the, how many years has this extra $8? Yeah, right, right. And you add that up and like, oh my gosh, where's that money been going? I was so annoyed at myself. Yeah. And then with our kids, that- what, what we found too is, you know, we sign up for a serve, a streaming service or, you know, iCloud memory. And yes. then I realize my kids have signed up for it. My wife signed up for it. And we're all paying, yeah. we're all paying the same, th- you know, for the same thing. Where you yeah. could go onto onto Apple and consolidate it all into one account and eliminate, you know, you got four people paying, you can drop that down to one person paying, and and, and we, we're finding yeah. some of that on our own credit card statements. And I and I, the little subscriptions that you might sign up for as an app, and the, you, they're recurring charges, and you forgot about them. I've found some of those too. So it's not necessarily just like refinancing your house, your mortgage, your mortgage, or selling your car and getting a different car. Like that could help, but these little things. It's amazing how they add up. And I'm like, I can't believe I just submitted the Netflix thing to you. Just, like, well, you know, at least you're honest on your calls, right? You got the authenticity comes through. I guess. Well, and along those lines, so, you know, some proactive things that you can do. So what would you say are some things military families that are struggling with their finances should be avoiding at this time? I am so glad you asked that question because this is a really critical time. Uh, for things to avoid if you're a military family. So just this week, um, the Social Security tax deferral started. And so that means that the, the Social Security tax that the government was taking out of uh, everyone's paycheck and certainly the military family's paycheck, they've stopped, uh, they've stopped taking that tax out. And if you're mm. in the in the private sector, that's optional, whether you're going to let, you're going to keep paying it or not paying it. If you're in the military, it's not optional. So the, the government has stopped taking that tax out of your paycheck. And that's going to happen through now through the end of December. Mm-hmm. So what military families are going to see is an increase in their monthly income. Mm-hmm. Well, that's temporary because in January, January through April of 2021, they're going to come back and ask for that money back. So you're sort of going to be paying double Social Security tax in oh. January through April. So my biggest concern I have right now, and we do at First Command, is that military families are going to see that extra money in their paycheck. They're going to spend the money in, in the extra money in the paycheck. And then when the government comes asking for that money back, they're not going to have it. And so they're going to be double taxed, and they're going to really feel the pain in that January to April time frame. So my first recommendation is to treat – that Social Security tax almost like a bill. Even if the uh-huh. government isn't taking it, pretend you're paying that bill. Put that money into into your savings account, so that when it, January rolls around and that you start getting double taxed, you've got the money you know already in your savings account, so you don't feel the pain of of getting that double Social Security tax January to April. I now, did not full, realize it was going to be yeah. double. Like that's good yep. information to know. Yeah. Now, now I'll tell you, there is a chance. That President Trump has said, "Hey." You know, if I'm reelected, I'm going to forgive that. You're not going to have to get double tax January mm-hmm. through April. Okay. Well, I wouldn't bet on that if I was right. a military family. I'd definitely put the money in savings. And then if it does get forgiven, guess what? You've still got the money in savings. So you haven't mm-hmm. lost it. But if the government comes knocking and asking for that money back, you definitely want to have it. You don't want to be scrambling January through April to find the money to pay for that, that double tax. Oh, that's good to be prepared. Yeah. Yep. Another thing uh, I would tell you is that um, starting in uh, October of this year, um, new uh, new military members will be enrolled in the blended retirement system at the full 5% rate. Mm-hmm. And for those that will be re-enrolled in January, so our current service members, your participation rate or your the contribution rate will be automatically increased to 5% as well. Leave it at 5%. It's so tempting to say, well, I could drop that down to four or three. And then that way I don't, you know, I could take that money myself. Don't rob from your retirement plan in order yeah. to fund what, what's going on today. And, and the easy thing to do is to say, well, <clears throat> I'll, I'll just save less or I won't put as much in my TSP or boy, I've got this insurance policy. You know, maybe I'll just cancel my insurance policy. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what if, God forbid something tragic happens to your family. That's the mm-hmm. reason you had the insurance in the first place. Mm-hmm. And the last thing you'd want to do 
is compound a a personal tragedy with a financial tragedy on top of it where you didn't have the money from your insurance policy available to help you through whatever you know, issue you, you had to deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh, in-service ret- withdrawals when you're stretched for money become uh, – in-service withdrawals from your TSP become – suddenly uh, it's, a, it's a consideration. Well, maybe I can tap into my TSP and take that money out. Yeah. Well, if you do, you're again, you're robbing from your retirement plan, right? And you can't put that money back later. So not only can you not replace the money, you lose the growth on the money that you took out as well. And what I always say to, to, to people when I'm talking about this is canceling your, your investment plan, canceling your insurance policy, tapping into TSP, those are the easy way outs, right? But they're kind of addictive. And I've never seen anybody tap into their, their 401k or their TSP once. And say, oh, it's mm-hmm. just going to be a one-time thing. Suddenly, it becomes a piggy bank, and they go back again and again and again. And that's a bad habit to get started. Yeah. It's a lot harder to, to discipline yourself and, and find those those expense savings we talked about earlier. But it's the right path. Don't rob from your future. Don't rob from your financial security uh, uh, to fund current day's expenses. Work harder to find ways to save that money so that you're not stealing from your retirement plan. Yeah, that's really good. And and I know that if a, f- a service member or family is really going through a hardship. Each of the service branches do have relief societies or agencies, organizations. There's ways to reach out to your service branch if, if it's a true hardship and there are things in place for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Go there first. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, and I'm getting a lot of feedback from listeners, like I was saying, and and about this scenario. And we know that Spouses are often the ones holding down the fort while their service member is deployed. And I've, I'm hearing from people that have just moved and they're brand new, haven't met anybody, and the service member is deploying and they're just alone. You know, that's not an uncommon situation. But as far as financially goes, when the service member is deployed and the spouse is back home, can you talk about some financial tips for that situation? Yeah, that's uh, that's got to be one of the toughest things uh, that our military families face is is you know that that parent who's who's not in the military staying back almost operating like a single parent. Mm-hmm. Um, the one of the things I would tell people right up front is to is to build a budget and stick to to that budget. And that's not always easy, but it's a budget that you can agree on with with your with your spouse uh, before deployment. You can communicate during deployment. You can even talk about that. But what I see too often is um, the spouse gets deployed. The one spouse gets deployed, and the other spouse suddenly the the the, the spending starts to increase and increase. Um, and when the service member comes home, suddenly we're facing ten or twelve or fifteen thousand dollars in credit card debt, which is what mm. I talked about before. Um, find that discipline of of you know setting a budget, sticking to that budget, uh, not tapping into these other places that we talked about before, not not taking the easy way out. Uh, use use a professional. Um, mm-hmm. you know, first command advisor, that, that's exactly why we're here is to help military families, you know, work through not just, you know, the, the good times when, when, when everyone's home and everything's going well, but the challenges mm-hmm. of deployment and, and that, 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 uh, at home parent, you know, acting like a single parent. So somebody that can coach you just like you know, a lot of us use a personal trainer when we go to the gym because, you know, we know about fitness, but we don't know everything. And with the help of a, of an expert, your chances of getting in shape faster and better, you know, go, those chances go up dramatically. Same thing with a financial coach is you might understand money, but there's a lot of complexities you probably don't understand. And to seek the advice of, of a professional who can help you get on track and stay on track is critical. And as we've already talked about, for the military families, there's, there's, there's no cost, you know, the, for the financial plan. That's, that's mm-hmm. complimentary. So you're not locking yourself into some uh, big expense through the, through the planning process either. Yeah. Why would you not check that out? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what, that's what we would say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and the other thing is, you know, you get used to that hazardous duty or deployment pay, that extra money, yes. and it's kind of like the tax deferral. That's temporary. And don't get your budget used to that because I know this from experience. It's, it's going to change, you know. That's so. so true, Jen. We, <laughs> you know, we all, uh, start to spend at, you know, at the level of income we're making. I think back to, you know, when I first got out of college or first got married and think, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of stuff and we didn't seem to need a whole lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, you know, it's, 
I won't tell you how many, but it's several <laughs> years later. And suddenly I need a lot more stuff and I spend yeah. money on a lot more stuff. I'm like, do we really need all this? And, you know, we always seem to, you know, find ways to spend that money. But if you can take that, that pay and put that aside, because as mm-hmm. you said, it's temporary and it's really hard to, to reduce your spending. So if you never raise your spending to meet that, that standard of living, then, then right. you won't miss it. And it really can have an impact in your, you know, your investment plan, your, your financial plan, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, we were kind of hit with this pandemic and it, out of the blue, and I don't know that many people were prepared for it. But as we hopefully, I keep saying this, are coming out of it or will be coming out of it right. and thinking about future challenges, do you have any advice for military families to, fi- you know, to better financially prepare for things that are unforeseen or any future challenges? I think the big thing is, is a little bit of what we talked about before is to go back and really establish a budget, understand where your how, how is your money being spent? Sitting down and crawling through your your monthly bills or or you know your ATM withdrawals. Where does that cash go? Um because it is I'm sure you've seen so many families uh throughout the, the United States and especially our military families, they don't have very much put aside in case of emergency. So I think it's the, the it I can't remember the exact percentage, but the percentage of of people that that don't have at least five hundred dollars set aside for an expense. I think it's close to eighty percent of of U.S. Yeah. families. It's shocking. It's, a, it's an incredible <laughs> number, right? So imagine yeah. you're you know you're always you know what if you blow a tire? What if your washer and dryer? What, what your right. washer goes out? Right? What if something happens to the dishwasher? What if something happens somewhere? You don't want to have to dig into your your saving or your um your investment plan. You don't have to want to tap into TSP to cover the these these costs that while unexpected aren't all that unexpected you know something's going to happen at some point right. so it's a given <laughs> yeah yeah so start scraping that money out of your budget now put that into a savings plan so that you you can weather those inevitable issues when they come up and not have to you know sell your mutual fund or or stop paying for your insurance policy because mm-hmm. you've cushioned yourself against those inevitable things that are going to pop up in any family well, my daughter, one of my daughters just got married and she was saying something that the other day about she didn't have any money. She goes, well, we do have the savings. And I said, that's what this is for. <laughs> like, that's right. what, it's not just, you know, that's, it's the, these unforeseen expenses. So exactly. that's such a simple thing to have a savings account that you're building. And it kind of cracks me up. She's in her twenties. It's like, that's exactly why you have it, you know? <laughs> exactly. And it's, um, it's interesting, but that's, I think a big value of first command is, 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 not just being a financial coach, but, but educating our clients along the way to understand those things. Because the running joke I've always said is, you know, in, in high school, I could learn to bake a cake through my home ec class, but nobody taught us about how to buy a, a home, what, what right. mortgages are all about, what interest rates on credit cards really amount to, how to balance my checkbook, those sorts of things, these basic financial skills that everybody needs. Somehow that doesn't get covered in high school, but like I said, mm-hmm. I learned how to drive a car and bake a cake, but yeah. you know, I, I can't, you know, pay, pay my, <laughs> pay my bills or anything because no one taught me how to do that. So that's a great piece of first command is the education part and just, yeah, learning how to better manage your own finances. That's a skill for life. Absolutely. absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I know that first command offers careers for military spouses. So if you had just a moment to talk about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, we are big fans of hiring military spouses. Um, we know that they're highly educated, they're hardworking, uh, they're well networked and they are, are so committed, uh, to taking care of military families. And on top of that, um, they can be completely empathetic because they're a military family themselves. So they understand the challenges of a military lifestyle. They understand the benefits uh, that come with, uh, for being in the military and, and how to take advantage of those benefits. Uh, so uh, they're, they're a great source of new advisors for us. Um, what I love on the first command side is that most of our offices, and we have about 180 offices around the world, most of them mm-hmm. in, in the U.S., uh, the vast majority of them are located near a military installation. So just about wherever you're going to be located, we probably have an office nearby. Mm-hmm. The skills you develop in one first command office are completely transferable to another first command office. So when that inevitable PCS comes up, Right. You you just, you know, pick up, you move and you start right over again in a, in a, in a new first command office. And so you might have, you know, by the time you, uh, the family gets out of the military, you might have 
you know, five different first command locations on your resume. But the great thing is they all say first command. Unlike, unfortunately, for many of our military spouses, it's kind of a, their resume looks like a patchwork of, of odd <laughs> jobs, right? That they were able yeah. to get as they Raises got my hand. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. From one duty station to the other. Right, and, right. and I don't have to t- tell you or your audience about the high rates of unemployment or underemployment in the mm-hmm. with, with military spouses. And what we like to, th- what we like to offer is, is a, is a career for our military spouses and mm-hmm. not just a job that you get in this location, a different job in a new location, a career that can move with you as you, as you move through your military life. And you offer training as well, right? You don't Absolutely. have to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We tell folks, if you come with a, a love of the military and a, and a willingness to work hard, we will teach you everything else that you need to know. That's awesome. So listeners, y'all need to go check that out for sure. Well, Mark, before we close here, did you have anything else you wanted to make sure and touch on? I think that the biggest thing I would say is just, you know, it's success in in investing or, or in your financial plan uh, really comes with discipline and it comes with time. The earlier you get started, the greater chance you have of being successful. Being disciplined and sticking to those things that prove to be successful are critical. And a, a financial coach can can really help you with both of those things. So we'd love it if folks checked out First Command, obviously, but I couldn't encourage you, uh, your listeners more strongly to find a financial coach that they know, that they trust, that is a fiduciary, that understands the ins and outs of a military lifestyle and work with that person to get you on and keep you on a path to financial security. That's great. And we'll have to have you come back after this is all over. Uh, yeah, I'd love to <laughs> and be And do back. a little update about now what <laughs> with our finances, whatever <laughs> that <happy> is. <laughs> right. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time and all the helpful information for military spouses, Mark. Absolutely. I'm happy to do it. Great. And listeners, be sure to visit firstcommand.com to learn more. You can click on Get Started to meet up with a coach near you, or you can look into careers as a financial advisor with First Command. So thanks again, Mark. I am I am sure this is great and helpful information. 